All right, so today I'm going to show you guys how to host Django on AWS App Runner. Uh, first thing we want to do is create our Django project. You can see it's just the base here. We have our URLs.py, we see we, uh, and our manage.py there. And a couple things we need to install right off the bat. We're going to go ahead and pip install g unicorn and we're going to get the version number here 20.1.0 go ahead go ahead and let that install after that we're going to go ahead and install white noise for this and the version that we're going to use for that is 6.4.0 Okay, now that's installed. We're gonna go ahead and pip freeze and we're gonna do requirements.txt. So this is gonna put all of our project dependencies in a file that um, App Runner is gonna use later to build our project. Okay, give that just a second to show up here. There it is. And you see we have all our dependencies and version numbers here. Okay, so from our root directory, we need to do a couple things in settings.py. Uh, while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and add star to allowed host because we don't know the um, URL the app runner is gonna assign us yet. And we need to check our static URL is correct. And we are going to go ahead and add a, a root for our static here. And that's just gonna be our base directory combined with the static URL uh, for our static files. Okay, then we need to check storages here. Uh, it looks like I'm gonna go ahead and have to add that. So just one second, I actually have it written down. If you need to pause the video and copy this, or if you just want me to um, post them in the comments, let me know. But we need to add those storages there. And then we need to check the middleware. We need to make sure that we have the security middleware there. It came when the project started and then we need to add white noise here. And we wanna make sure that the white noise here at the end, uh, we're using camel case for white noise middleware and the comma at the end there too. Okay, where am I getting an error here? Um, there we go back up. Oh, I didn't put quotes around the star. Oopsie. Okay. So these, I believe. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add a couple files here to our root directory. Uh, so that's going to be the same directory that you have managed.py in. So we're going to make it needs to be named lowercase, no spaces, no dashes, apprunner.yaml. Uh, so when we upload this to apprunner, uh, it's going to look for these files to do our configuration. Uh, and I'll go back over what this is in just a second, because before I forget, we need to make a startup.sh, and this needs to be named the same way also. Okay, I'm just going to add the commands here, just a second. Okay, and then at the end here where it says my project, we see we whatever your, um, your core is there. So mine's named app runner, your project, whatever your name is going to be, you're going to replace that there just like I'm doing. Okay. 
And so we want to do Python 3. Uh, this is going to tell us uh, App Runner to install our requirements that we just made. Uh, and then it's going to, um, when we run App Runner, it's going to call this startup sh here. And it's going to collect our static files. And it's going to go ahead and launch our app. Okay. Uh, I believe that's all we need to do here in our IDE. I've already went ahead and made an app runner um, repository. You can name it whatever you want for your project uh, in GitHub. We're going to do a little um, CI CD pipeline here. Okay. Um, I really can't remember if I added an auth token for this or an access token, uh, but oops, hold on. We want to make sure that that requirements file is in the root directory. Uh, so it should be in line with manage.py uh, along with the YAML and the, uh, the sh file, shell file. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and change into that directory. So I'm two app runners deep here. <laughs> Okay, um, okay. Uh, yeah, I did something wrong there with the secure shell. So uh, we'll, we'll just create the repository through the, um, the local one through our um, terminal here. And all you gotta do is copy these commands that it provides you in GitHub. Okay, so we initialized our uh, repository locally. Okay, um, so where it says add readme, you can do that. Um, but if we wanna add everything in the project directory, we're just gonna do git add and then dot. Uh, so that adds everything in the directory. Okay, and then we're gonna do git commit. We're gonna add a message flag to it and we're gonna tell it it's just our initial commit. And we're gonna let it know that our branch is main. And we are going to go ahead and add the origin of our repository from GitHub. And then we're gonna push. So get push, flag you, and then our origin is gonna be main. Okay, looks like it ran successfully. We'll go check in GitHub here. Okay. And voila. Okay, all our files been added there. Okay, got everything we need. So now we can hop over to AWS console. We're gonna go to App Runner service. We're gonna create a service. Uh, for what we're doing here, we're gonna do source code repository, provider GitHub, and we're gonna add a new connection here to that repository. Okay. And we're going to install, uh, adds a little connection here. It's going to bring up your uh, GitHub. You're going to need to authenticate. And you preferably each time only want to do it to a select repository. We're going to pick our repository. Click next. Ensure that the right repository is picked there. Uh, our main branch and our source directory, we can leave that as is. We don't want to do automatic deployments because that charges us more. And we're going to do use a configuration file, which is going to be that apprunner.yaml, um, like we previously talked about in the IDE. 
click next year. Uh, you can name the service whatever you want. Uh, I'll just name it um, acronym App Runner Tutorial. We'll use proper naming conventions. We'll use lowercase. And then here you're going to pick um, your instance size. Uh, I believe it is six cents uh, per CPU hour. And I believe it is seven tenths of a cent for each gigabyte hour. Uh, they charge you. Um, uh, they charge you for the RAM provisioned, uh, but they only charge you while the CPU isn't being used for active requests. Uh, and the reason they charge you for what's provisioned is to avoid cold starts. Okay, so we got everything set up. We really didn't need to make any changes there because everything's going to be in our configuration file. Uh, okay, now we're going to click deploy. Uh, this usually takes anywhere from three to... 10 minutes um, hit the refresh here you can see the logs are starting to drop it's shown that it's um, pulling the code successfully from our github repository so I'll be back in a minute uh, once this is done and we'll go ahead and test it out all right uh, we have our successful deployment here shown by the green banner at the top and they've given us an AWS app runner domain here. So we're going to go ahead and click that, open it up and boom, there's our live Django framework application running in AWS app runner, uh, all done in about 10 minutes. Uh, I really hope that helps you guys. Uh, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, uh, just let me know in the comments. If this helped you out, uh, please like, and subscribe. Thanks guys.